Elton, we're going to move on to our set, uh, section of questions on worldviews and contemporary issues. Mm. Um, in a past generation, when life expectancy was shorter, sickness and death more prevalent. Mm. But now with greater health care, folks generally don't expect to die prematurely mm. um, with greater opportunities. Um, and there's an expectation that also someone can attain and get anything they want or desire in life. Mm. Um, is that it? Are those realistic outlooks on life? I think it's very real that we are living longer. And not just longer, but more effective lives. There's a lot of opportunities. I think that that's a good comment. But it's not really a good strategy to go through life thinking that I can just put off my spiritual life. I'm going to meet God. Whether I live 50 years, 100 years, or as a baby born in the year 2000 might live to 130 if everything is going the way it's going, you're still going to meet God. And my challenge then would be that since it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment, that's what the Bible says, we should always put our spiritual decisions first in our life, regardless of what age we are. And it may be true when you go into the hospital that, well, I'll, I'll get out. These boys will take care of me in here. And, you know, that doctor or that lady I met is fantastic. She'll perform the surgery. And so she probably will. Even if I live to a thousand, I still have to meet God. Eternity is an awful long time, John, okay. regardless of what age I live to. There's a, there's a little verse comes to my mind and we sing it as a chorus with the children. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all these things shall be added. Right. It's fundamental. You have to meet God. So if you're going to meet God, why not put it first now? Mm -hmm. And then enjoy that life as a Christian. Because if you put it off... And a Christian life, I think there's a perception that a Christian life is one to be endured, not enjoyed. Have you got a comment on that? Yeah, I've got a big comment on that. <laughs> big comment on that. Just go into an old folks' home. Just go in and see the people that have been full of themselves all their life and those that have lived their life for the Lord Jesus. You tell me which one had a happy life, which one had a, a life. And I'm telling you, some Christians have endured a lot of suffering, and yet they have a joy that this world cannot give. That's nice. Thanks. Um, um, on some of the contemporary issues here at Elton, mm. uh, you can give your perspectives. Uh, some folks say the biggest issue of our day is climate change and environmental damage. Mm. Is the Bible positive or negative on that topic? Sometimes Christians seem to get pilloried for thinking they're uh, out of touch with uh, these environmental issues. Sure. Now, first of all, the most important issue is a spiritual issue to do with our souls and whether we're right with God. So it's not climate change, it's not environmental change, it's not a pandemic. It is a spiritual problem that should be our fundamental focus. Having said that, you're asking about the contemporary issue. When Adam was put in the garden he was of Eden, right at the beginning, when man was created, he was to take care of it. Full stop. A Christian should be a very good environmentalist because they believe the Creator is loving, kind, providing, and a Christian appreciates God and will seek to please God by taking care of his creation. I would, again, I say a Christian ought to be a good environmentalist, not wasting, not slaughtering, not pillaging not burning forests, taking them out irresponsibly. So uh, that's my answer to climate change and that. It may very well be quite a real thing, mm. but I also want to be given the balance that a Christian knows that we can use the earth. So we're not to abuse it, but we're to use it. So if we've been given the sunshine and the coal and the oil and the ground and the trees and that, let's manage it and let's enjoy it. Mm. 
because that's the way God intended it for me. Every good gift has been given that we might enjoy it. So a balance, I think, John, would be the perspective. Things to be uh, used responsibly. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. No. I think we, it's, it is worthwhile to acknowledge the great strides that have been made towards environmental improvement and, and recycling and all of these things which are, are, are generally good for the environment. And, it's, sure. and uh, we, we, would all, we would all highly... <laughs> it just makes sense, John. If I can reuse something or recycle it, do it. And uh, I don't make a religion out of it. It's not my religion. Out of a devotion to God, I take care of God's things, one of which is creation. But I want to point out something. Growing up in Canada, there was one of the great lakes of Canada that had all the fish dying in it. I'll tell you why. They were pumping all the toxic waste into it out of all the factories. The moment they stopped putting the sewer systems directly into the lake, why, within 20, 30 years, all the fish are back again and the water is blue. And God has created scrubbers in his in his in the natural creation. We just need to act responsibly. And uh, I, I, I don't want to minimize the issue, John, but I certainly don't want to maximize okay. it. Thanks, Alvin. Um, this is a, a very topical one. Um, a lot of talk today about gender identity mm. and sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be a very confusing world out there mm -hmm. for children and young people thinking about children and young people in particular, is there something helpful you can add on these topics, Rob? That's a very sensitive topic, John. Uh, not because it's a political hot potato alone, but because there are children out there that are suffering because of this gen gender identity difficulty. In my hand, I hold a Bible. And God says, he's our creator. God says he made them male, and female. Now I say that very clearly, but with sensitivity. Male and female. It could be that there's a very male-like female, or a very female-like male, and it looks blurry. Could I just say, identify with really how you've been born, how God has made you, Maybe you'll need a little doctor's help. Um, you can do chromosome tests. You can do various things. The very small minority of people, it, there will be a confusion. So I would say to a little boy, look at your father, be a man. And I would say to a little girl, look at your mother and be a woman. And parents should teach their children. Male? And female. This will just clear up a lot of confusion. But I'm not minimizing this as a very sensitive issue, I know, but the Bible's clear. Mm -hmm. It's binary. Yeah. Thanks, so. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> on the, the next question, and the final one, and again a delicate question, and Elgin, there's a lot of talk, uh, particularly right at the moment, about abortion, assisted dying, assisted suicide in the media. Um, are these moral issues, social issues, or personal issues about which no one should interfere with the rights of so-called so another? What does the Bible have to say on these sensitive issues? Yes. Again, these are issues of today, especially the abortion issue. I think it comes down to what God says about life. Who is the giver of life? Who is the sustainer of life? To be honest, John, if all we are is a bit of a cosmic accident and I am just a conglomeration of cells and my wife and I produce another conglomeration of cells, whether we kill it off or not, maybe doesn't have a huge meaning. But if each one of us are made in the image of God, now everything changes. Everything changes with a creator that has given us an eternal aspect and an appreciation of the Almighty, we have no right to take a life. We have no right. Now, I hope you and I aren't faced with a position sometime between 
maybe an expectant mother and she's going to die if this child stays any longer in their womb. Those are very deep issues that belong in the same category as I've got two boys, I only have the strength to pull one of them out of the fire. Which one do I pull out? I don't know. Probably, I don't know how I'd ever make that decision. But one thing I do know is that I never gave life. Therefore, I should never take life in that way, assisted suicide. An older person has just as much right to live as you do. And so does an unborn child. It's life, John. It's life. And, it's, you know, there's the, there's the perception of value and the, the diminishing of value of life. Oh, that's what I was saying. If I'm just a conglomeration of cells mm -hmm. with no eternal value, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But I'm not. Neither are you. Neither is a little baby. And to, to slaughter the unborn, and I say that carefully, is really saying to God that his image, his creation, his life doesn't matter. And no, the Bible makes it very, very clear. I think for, for, for the elderly or for the infirm or for people who are severely disabled, the, the concept of value is equally important because if they feel not valued mm. and not wanted, they may willingly hand themselves over to one of these procedures. So I, I, the, 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 the concept of value of life sure. is the same at both ends of, of, yeah. of, the, of, of the, the cycle of life. Yes. So what gives a life value, John? That would be, I think, what we need to answer. What, what gives a val value to life? Is it my ability to achieve? Is it my ability to speak, to run, to fight? Is that the value of my life? If so, a disabled person, a very old person, or quite frankly, someone we just don't like, they're in our way. Now, John, the moment you think you can take any life, you've entered into a realm where you will take any life. Well, it's very solemn. It is, it's quite a frightening concept. Isn't Correct. It? We therefore, we cannot take anyone's life in that way, whether old or young. The value of a life is God's declared value. And to think that God sent his son into the world to become a savior, and the Bible says, gave himself a ransom for all. What a value. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, whenever you, we, we say these things, Elton, there's a cost associated with value. Mm -hmm. So for a child that is born, and then there's a cost in, in caring for it. For the elderly, there's a cost yes. in looking after mm -hmm. the, the elderly and infirm. And, and, uh, and many Christian institutions have, have gone to great lengths to, to give a value and to help and support the vulnerable. And they are not giving that disabled child value. They are recognizing yeah. the value. And because of that, take care of them. You know how I measure a society? I measure a society by how well it takes care of its most vulnerable.